Hello, welcome to the Friday, May 18th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. An interesting case we have been working on for the last few days about scans for port 3333. This port is heavily used by miners and has also been used as a remote admin interface for the Claymore miner. Claymore added an unauthenticated JSON RPC API that essentially allows remote code execution. Now, while this wasn't the intent of the API, the exploitation is pretty straightforward and has been known at least since February. The problem is that not only the configuration file, but also a reboot batch file can be overwritten using this API. And then just by rebooting the software, you are then able to execute that file. Now, the most common command that I have seen being executed this way is, well, just restarting Claymore Miner, of course, with different parameters, gaining money to whoever launched the exploit. Interestingly, they retain the admin interface on the same port. So these systems can easily be exploited again and again. If you are running Claymore Miner, there are a couple things that you can do. First of all, you can just disable uh, this uh, particular remote admin API. That's probably the safest course of action. You can also make it listen on a different port or by giving it a negative port number. So let's say minus 5000, then it will listen on port 5000, but it will disable some of the more dangerous commands like overriding configuration files. Taking a quick look at some of the mining pools and the earnings of the mining pool IDs that we have seen indicates that the hackers here made about a thousand dollars or so, but varies based on the attacker. And well, for everybody here worrying about PCI, a new minor version of PCI was released version 3.2.1. Last version was 3.2, which was released April 2016. So about two years old now. The update is really minor, sort of uh, backing up uh, some of the guidance regarding old versions of TLS, or as PCI calls it, early TLS. Early TLS typically refers to TLS version 1.0, but also in some ways includes TLS 1.1. So you really should get on the bandwagon and turn off TLS 1.0 and 1.1 if you are dealing with credit card data. What I found is that once you have TLS 1.0 disabled, the step from 1.1 to 1.2 is actually less of a problem. I had less complaints about turning off TLS 1.1 than I had about turning off TLS 1.0. Now, if you can enable TLS 1.3, at least as an option, but at this point, it's way too early to turn off TLS 1.2, and I don't see any real reason to do so at this point. And I think it was yesterday that I talked about a possible vulnerability in the Password Manager Keeper. As explained then, the vulnerability could allow Keeper, the company behind this Password Manager, to essentially decrypt passwords that were stored with its service. Well, uh, they turned around a fix amazingly quickly and also published an updated version of the open source Commander tool that reflects this fix. Actually, Commander was the tool that was originally used to discover this vulnerability, I believe. In a blog post that Keeper published about this issue, it also reminded researchers that Keeper participates in bug crowd and I just looked it up. Uh, they set this up about a month ago, so still fairly new and uh, so far actually rewarded 18 vulnerability disclosures via bug route. And Cisco released 18 new security bulletins over the last couple days and four of these are labeled as critical. Three of these critical vulnerabilities do affect the Cisco Digital Network Architecture Center or a DNA. Well, uh, one of these vulnerabilities is also yet again a static credential vulnerability. So once these credentials leak, all it takes is just to log in in order to gain access to the system. 
Secondly, we do have an authentication bypass vulnerability in Cisco DNA Center that uh, can be exploited by sending a crafted URL. This is typically a case where by modifying the URL, adding a couple dot dots or so, you'll be able to reach URLs that you shouldn't have access to. And then we also got a remote code execution and denial of service vulnerability in Cisco's ASA, the Adaptive Security Appliance. And this is actually an update to an advisory that was released back in February, but they found some additional attack vectors that weren't completely patched yet. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.